here with a new episode of Chord Play. This is the Chords of Motorhead, and I've had a lot of requests to feature some of the legendary Motorhead's music. And we've already looked at Fast Eddie Clark this month, during Metal Month. You know, he appeared in the Fast Way episode, and now we're going to hit some more Fast Eddie Clark in this Motorhead episode. Definitely essential icons and pioneers of metal, formed in London, England in 1975. During their career, released 23 studio albums, 5 EPs, 16 live albums, 16 compilations, 3 box sets, They've sold over 30 million albums worldwide, and they're not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. How could that be? Shame on you, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Ushering in, you know, pop and hip-hop artists, and you totally snub somebody essential like Motorhead? That museum's a joke. But anyway, this episode's not, and definitely Motorhead's not a joke. This music's pioneering and essential, so if you're a fan or been following Metal Month, buckle up. Here we go. So like I just mentioned, we're going to be hitting a lot of Fast Eddie Clark in this episode. And really in Motorhead's music, there's three phases. There's the Fast Eddie Clark phase, which is the early years. He left and eventually formed Fastway. Brian Robertson from Thin Lizzy stepped in for a couple albums and then eventually was replaced by Phil Campbell. But this episode's primarily going to stay in the 70s. We're really not going to pass 1980 as far as the music and albums we're going to hit in this episode. So no offense to the other members of Motorhead that played guitar. But this episode's all about Fast Eddie Clark yet again. And as far as connecting Motorhead's music with horror films and video games, which is kind of the theme for this month's, you know, Metal Month, uh, there's a lot here. Definitely Motorhead has a history of this. Uh, what, Zombie Nightmare, The Slumber Party Massacre, Hellraiser 3, episodes of The Walking Dead, uh, the video game Brutal Legend, uh, the more recent Dave Grohl uh, Studio 666 movie, and a bunch of others, but here's some connections between Motorhead and horror films and video games. And speaking of the Hellraiser 3 film, uh, there's actually a song, Hellraiser, and that was a collaboration between Lemmy and Ozzy Osbourne. And it's interesting that Lemmy and Ozzy were heavyweights and titans of metal, but they were also really good friends too. And I love that kind of sidebar story where it's like, yeah, that's awesome. The music and chord parts in this episode actually came from four Motorhead albums, and like I mentioned during the intro, they've released 23 studio albums. That's a lot of music to work through, and that's another reason why I'm basically just locking on to those early Fast Eddie Clark years, because there's so much music, I really couldn't skip those important you know, early albums and stuff. So there's a lot more where this came from, so if you're a fan or you want to dive deeper, jump in. There's tons more where this came from. So anyway, here we go. With the opening, that's the song No Class from the album Overkill. That's one of my favorite Motorhead songs, for sure. And the riff, it totally reminds me of Tush by ZZ Top. It's like Tush in the key of A, but No Class is something like this. <laughs> So we're starting in A, and this is the, the tush kind of riff, like this. So it's like that open A, and you're bouncing between that 7th fret and 5th fret kind of double stop there on the D and the G string. So that's like a partial, you know, if you want to think chords, that's like an A sus4 and A minor 7, right? And you're just kind of, you know, bouncing back and forth. 
hammer on, you know, that uh, D to E to that G note. <laughs> Do a few rounds of that, and then eventually you hear this kind of mosh and power chord part. And check out, you know, Fast Eddie and Lemmy coming together. Because a lot of times when you hear that super heavy chunk in Motorhead's music, a lot of times that's Lemmy and, you know, whoever the guitarist is coming together. And it's like dinosaurs, brontosaurus, you know, or tyrannosaurus or whatever, just, you know, uh, mashing around. <laughs> That, you know that F to like a C over G stacked and that's the big dinosaur Godzilla kind of sound and then you start hitting this D and you're kind of raising up the fretted part and then back to that F to that C over G and then do that same thing but now an E and then right back to the tush riff and A Next up to the song Capricorn, this is also from the album Overkill, and Overkill is a great Motorhead album, just a heads up. And this example is actually going to reveal the signature move in Fast Eddie Clark's you know, rhythm style when he was working with Motorhead. You gotta keep in mind, he's playing against Lemmy. Lemmy's playing his Rickenbacker through a Marshall stack with distortion, playing chords and just, you know, this thunderous sound. So he's hitting a lot of low stuff, obviously, it's a bass. And then it's interesting to notice like what Fast Eddie Clark did. So he left that area typically for Lemmy. And then Fast Eddie Clark would find these higher riffs, you know, uh, chords and, and rhythms and stuff like that in this higher register to kind of separate his parts from Lemmy. And that's a really interesting way to kind of orchestrate your guitar parts, you know, if you're working with a, a loud bassist or another guitarist or something like that. But check this out, here's Capricorn. <laughs> right there so in the first part he's a little quieter using the neck pickup and he's doing like that and he's basically playing the low E open he's muting out the A so don't include that A string and it's really just a 14th fret bar on the D G and B string and then a 12th fret bar on the same string so chord wise that's an implied what E6 sus4 and then an E minor 7 like that you know, kind of using that kind of barred movement with the low E ringing. Right? Then he opens it up like bridge pickup with more distortion. Right? And he's basically doing the same thing, like that E sus4 to E minor 7. And then that's like an E6, uh, uh, what, sus2, like that? Right? So it's really interesting to see what he's doing in there. stuff and check this out the rest of the examples in this episode are going to use uh, different versions and variations of chords like that next up is the song overkill the title track from the album overkill and once again we're doing this high position riffing check this out <laughs> We're gonna basically start with this ultra busy uh, riff. 
and he's literally just grabbing an E5 way up there. And he's reaching over and grabbing that partial E minor 7. So once again, he's playing, you know, these really high position chords against Lemmy's super low heavy bass like that. of that and then you're doing a variation of what we had in Capricorn right there during the verse and it's just that 14th fret bar that 12th fret bar against that low E like that and let's see that was a E6 sus4 to an E minor 7 right and then all the way down here like that C over G stacked, you know, that super heavy, you know, Godzilla chord. Right back to the... You know, right back to that higher position, and there you're doing, you know, the E minor 7 to that E sus 4 with the low E, you know, back and forth. Like that. Go right back to that C over G. Next up's the main riff from Keep Us on the Road. This is from the first Motorhead album. And once again, this documents Fast City Clark nailing these high position riffs like this. <laughs> So it's that low E5, but it's really high right there. And then it's part of that E minor 7, but I'm just hearing the D and the G strings there. And then it's the second time where I hear, you know, it extended up to the B string right there. So it changes that second time. Like that. simple riff but once again showing you how he was kind of thinking of you know separating his parts from Lemmy and really coming up with something inventive and original which is definitely right there. Next up's the riff from All the Aces from the album Bomber and once again we're doing this high position riff and then he starts moving around but like this. <laughs> So really cool. And now we're just banging on that E minor 7, that 12th fret. And I think it's just the D and the G string. It's not on the B. And you're just going back and forth between the low E and that little partial chord. Like that. And after that runs its course, you've got a single note riff right here. power chords, you know, a basic power chord moving to a stacked power chord. That's kind of a signature sound in Motorhead's music, like that. And it's just F sharp 5 to that B over F sharp, you know, a B power chord with F sharp in the bass. That heavy dinosaur Godzilla sound, once again. And after that... goes right back to that first riff. Next up's the opening to Live to Win from the album Ace of Spades and it's something like this.
You know, something like that. So you start with these hits on that E5. Like that. And then eventually you start this. So you're just basically banging on that low E. And then you're going to do the 12th fret, 14th fret, 12th fret. You know, uh, that you know E minor 7, E6 sus floor back to E minor 7. Like that. And the verse starts and you start sliding into that D5. And then right back into that uh, that high you know, position riff. Okay, last but not least is The Chase is Better Than The Catch. This is also from Ace of Spades. Definitely a great song here, legendary. And uh, the riff is something like this. So we're basically starting with this heavy riff, the low E open, that D to E, and you're kind of playing that, you know, uh, kind of doubled riff there. And then once again, it's kind of these one finger chords like we did up here, but now we're in the fifth and uh, seventh position like that. So right there, you're kind of doing like a partial C to a partial uh, D, right? Implied. G5 right there, and then D to that C, back to that D. So it's all partial chords on the top. We're going right back where we were earlier and we're doing... So that 12th to 14th back and forth and you slide the 14th off. And right there you do the 12th to 14th and then relocate back to that uh, 5th and 7th again. So that's interesting to notice Fast Eddie, you know, kind of expanding what he was originally doing up here. And that, that type of playing appears in tons of Motorhead, you know, songs and on different albums. But it did kind of end whenever Fast Eddie left the group. And uh, that is kind of a signature, uh, kind of a secret of Motorhead sound, at least for those early albums. All right, that's going to wrap this episode of Chord Play with this look at the chords of Motorhead. Definitely an essential, legendary, uh, very influential metal band. I mean, as soon as they hit the scene... You know, their music just basically exploded and inspired and definitely motivated an entire generation of musicians to pick up guitars, pick up drums, pick up bass, start singing, start forming bands. And uh, definitely their legacy and influence is everywhere. Everybody was, you know, became suddenly a Motorhead fan seemingly overnight. And I've talked to so many people, you know, people you know, play classical or jazz or they play, you know, music that isn't metal. And then they'd kind of admit, like, you know, bands like Motorhead and ACDC are kind of my guilty pleasure. And it always would blow me away where it's like, you're a jazz player. And you like Motorhead and ACDC, which I think is so cool. But it's interesting to notice, you know, I've actually had conversations like that with people about Iron Maiden, too. Classical, you know, musicians talking about their love for Iron Maiden, which always kind of confused me. But it's like, man, that's cool. I didn't realize you guys were listening to stuff like that. 
But with Motorhead, definitely. I mean, their image, the sound, the whole thing, total package. They changed the game. They changed metal. You know, hot on the heels of groups like Deep Purple and Black Sabbath. Definitely. Motorhead's that essential piece of the picture. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to Night Lessons, and I'll be back before you know with more content and material. Thank you.